Well, the keys to unpicking the causes and indicators of dementia are increasingly being unlocked by dedicated researchers in the field. This week, some greater understanding with the discovery of why some people with dementia are compelled to massively overeat. The research opens the way for better diagnosis and the hope, too, of new treatments. Dr Olivier Piguet led the team from Neuroscience Research Australia and uh, he's on the line this morning. Doctor, good morning and welcome. Uh, good morning, Tim. It'll look good to uh, catch up with you. Look, you. Tell us about this, this link and overeating. Uh, well, uh, we, we have been studying frontotemporal dementia, which is one type of dementia uh, which is not very well recognized, uh, unlike Alzheimer's disease that most people would know about. Um, in frontotemporal dementia, um, uh, some patients will present with a marked change in behavior and personality, and one of these changes in behavior is uh, that some of these patients will start overeat. And when I say eat a lot, they will eat a lot. They will eat a uh, tendency to eat sweet foods, uh, carbohydrates, and um, uh, will uh, eat and eat, and they'll go out at their way to find food, uh, for example, stealing food of people's plates. No, that, that is, you would have to say, quite unusual behaviour, isn't it? it? It is, it is. And because it, it happens in patients who tend to be younger than your typical, uh, what, what you think of someone who would have dementia, it, it, it affects people in their 50s and 60s. So obviously it, it causes great distress in, in families and uh, friends and, and uh, people around them. Um, and... There's the question of, well, is this a psychiatric disorder or is it something that is happening in their brain? And with this research, we, we found at least part of the answer is that it seems to be that uh, our, our, the, the, the portion of the brain that regulates eating is, is um, not uh, processing the messages uh, correctly. How, how do you go about making a discovery like that? How, how do you research that? Uh, well, what we did was to uh, what we, we, were, we got interested in, in the eating disturbance uh, by noticing that these patients, although they eat a lot, tend not to become. They, they do gain weight, so they, uh, there's, uh, there's obviously a weight gain, but they don't become obese. So it it. it it uh, told us that there was something to do also with metabolism mm. and uh, the, the part of the brain that is critical for uh, regulating our metabolism is the hypothalamus, and um, which is a, a tiny piece of the brain. It's, just, it, it, it's about pea size, so we're talking a few grams that, that sits in the middle of the brain. Um, but this, this uh, brain region is critical to regulate eating as well as sleep and uh, body temperature. And so what we did was to recruit uh, patients who had been diagnosed with uh, frontal temporal dementia. We looked at their eating patterns and then we scanned them. So we put them in, a, in an MRI machine and got pictures of their brain and um, then started measuring their hypothalamus. Okay, and you, so you know the, the word differences then? Yes. So, so what we found was that the, 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 the patients who had um, eating disturbance had, well, on the whole, all patients, <clears throat> excuse me, had a smaller hypothalamus compared to healthy adults. But the, most interestingly was uh, that the patients who had the most severe um, eating disturbance had the smallest hypothalamus. So that was the first clue to us that the hypothalamus was indeed involved in, in that uh, disturbance. I, I'm, I'm absolutely intrigued by the fact that you say these people are, uh, are overeating, even to the point where they, they may you know, go to the lengths of, of stealing food from, yes. from yes. people's plates, yet they, they, they don't become obese. Yes. So, so what, what is happening is, is they, they get uh, messages from the periphery. So you're, you're eating... Your hypothalamus will receive messages from your gut when your stomach is empty, saying and a chemical messenger mm. to the hypothalamus that will say, well, I need food, eat, uh, feed me. And then when you're, you have had enough to eat, you have another message that's telling you, well, you need to stop eating. 
And what is happening is, is these messages telling, well, give me some food, are still coming to the hypothalamus, but how the, the hypothalamus understands the meaning of this message uh, is, is probably changing. So uh, there's no, uh, un, uh, th there's a, a loss of, of control and understanding what these messages mean and that these people still eat. Uh, but at the same time, because there's, there's this intake of, of food, uh, that you're, there, there are probably other changes in terms of metabolism that also take place. That means that uh, probably some of these food is burned up, burned out uh, faster. Um, now, th 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 this is something that still needs to be investigated further. And uh, I must say we're, we're extremely lucky to obtain funding from the National Health and Medical Research Council this week to, to investigate that. So in this next project, we'll look also at, at how uh, chemical messengers are uh, understood or processed from the periphery uh, in, in the brain. No, absolutely fascinating because obviously a great deal more could uh, could come out of this, and there could be research that leads to uh, to ways of uh, tackling uh, yeah. obesity itself. I, I, I absolutely, and and also what is interesting in in this type of dementia is that uh, we also looked at at brains of patients with frontotemporal dementia. So after they they've, they've died, we have a large brain bank here, mm. here at Neuroscience Research Australia. And uh, we looked at the, the hypothalamus in, in these uh, brains, and what we found is that uh, the patients who had the, the uh, most severe atrophy, so the most severe shrinkage in the hypothalamus, were those with this one specific protein deposition. So in, in frontotemporal dementia, there are two types of pathology in the brain, and um, unfortunately, clinically, we, we are unable to know now which type of pathology these patients have. And so it would uh, suggest that the, the patients who have abnormal eating behavior uh, have one specific type of pathology in their brains, which is extremely important when it comes to uh, prognosis and also when uh, treatments become available, then we'll know whether uh, these patients can benefit from uh, from these treatments. Yes, well, considering um, the the epidemic of Alzheimer's and uh, dementia as our population ages, this uh, this becomes absolutely critical research, doesn't it? Ah, yes, yes, yes. You, you are, you're absolutely correct. Uh, with the aging of the population, the number of individuals who will develop dementia. Uh, will increase, and then it's become uh, more and more important to try to diagnose these people early and make sure that they uh, get to all the treatments that are currently available. And this also, too, just at this point, I suppose, is where an early or an indicator that there is an issue if that behaviour changes and people in that start overeating like that, that is certainly the warning bell should be ringing. Yes. Um, in, in general, it's accompanied by other uh, signs as well. These people tend to change in terms of their general personality. So they, the way they were changes a lot. They become much more distant, uh, cold, unemotional, mm. uh, unconcerned by what is happening around them, and also unconcerned by the impact their behavior has on, on other people. All righty. But what next uh, for you and the research team? Well, uh, as I was saying, we, we, we have received funding yep. to continue that, uh, that endeavor. We're also interested in, in different aspects of early presentations or early clinical presentations. So we, we have a great interest in, in emotion changes in these patients and also uh, how memory is affected in these different types of dementia. Well, keep up the, the good work. It's a fascinating uh, area. No, thanks for coming on the program and talking about it this morning. Well, thank you for having me, Tim. Much appreciated. Thanks.